In this video, I'm going to use uh, WSL2 on Windows and use a Ubuntu app to run some Python code and do some automation for my learning purposes. So what I've done is I've got a, um, a lab in EVNG and I've got 10 routers. So it's a basic INE topology, which um, I will configure basic IP addressing and then we will see if um, I can have this addressing on the devices and then uh, see if uh, the ping or DMVPN comes up. Okay, so if I just go on to putty and look at the devices, so I can see, um, so we can see that uh, there was no initial config apart from a DHCP IP address and I don't have anything configured. So what I'm going to do is first I'm going to run a script which I wrote to bootstrap the topology. So I've called it bootstrap config and then I need to give it the lab name. So I am lab I think. So what the script is doing is it's connecting to EVNG API, getting the devices list for whatever devices I have in EVNG, all the 10 devices. So it picked up 10 devices. So if you have used an EVNG, um, you can tell it to the devices ports. So all the devices, if they don't have any config, that's how EVNG connects to the devices. And because I've logged in with API, it's logged me out from GUI. If I log back in, and just to show you, if I hover over the device, at the bottom of the screen here, we can see that it opens a Telnet connection using the IP address of EVNG, and then it uses a port number in incrementing fashion. And you can get this information using EVNG API. So what I've done is, um, if I show you the script, um, I'm sending the bootstrap config where I'm configuring interface 00 for DHCP and then uh, creating the crypto keys. If there are any previous crypto keys, delete them and configure a username and enable SSH access. So if I go to the devices, I should be able to see so on R1, we can see that it's configured some of the stuff which we asked. And then next, what I'm doing is just wait for 45 seconds for the device to pick up the IP address and generate the crypto keys. And then we will configure the IP address as the permanent IP address. So we can see here that um, it's gone into the interface. It's looked up. What's the IP address it's got from DHCP? And then it's configured that IP address on the interface. Okay, so R3, R4, R5, R6, R7. Okay, so it's not done R7 because it might have timed out the connection. Yeah. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cancel and then just run it again. Because you need to have the console open. I think that's why it didn't configure. Yeah, so now it's configured R7, R8, R9. And we have R10. And now it's going to just wait for 45 seconds so it can finish generating the keys and pick up the IP address from DHCP. And now we can see R10 has picked up an IP address.
Okay, now it's configuring the fixed IP address from the DHCP assignment. And we can see on the console. So let's go to R10. Okay, so we have bootstrapped all the devices, all the 10 devices with initial config which is this and then what we have got is that it's generated a file called ip.txt if i do ip.txt sorry ip.txt so in that file i have all the ip addresses i can ssh so now these are the ip addresses which are picked up from interface E00 from E00 and now instead of Telnet I can SSH to all these IP addresses for these devices. Okay, so the next part is I'm going to run a HTTP server in this folder. So just to show you, if I open another window, and so in this folder I have the config directory where I have all the configs for the devices. So if I do and then basic. IP addressing. So in there I have R1, R2, R3, all the configs. And this is the config for INE CCI lab. Okay. Okay, so these are all the configs in there. So what I've done is I've just run a HTTP server so I can serve these files for HTTP and next I have another app and that's a Flask app which will deploy the config. So if I run my app and then go to the browser and if I browse to my IP where I'm running the Flask app, which is the local and port 5000, which I'll put in here and then config. So if I refresh this page, we can see that I'm getting this directory. So in here, I have this basic IP addressing, which I've shown you earlier. And if you just go back, so I'm going to select this addressing and I'm going to say deploy this to my devices. Okay, so this page will update once the deployment is finished. If I go to my HTTP server, I can see that there was a request for r1.txt and that's just some basic debugging I wanted to print to see what I, what directory it's picking up and uh, running the script. So we can see it's done R1. Now it's requested for R2. Okay, let's have a look if this Looks like R1 and R2 done it. Okay, R3 has done it as well. R4 and R5, I think this is taking a little bit of time. But we've got R1, R2, and R3. If we just do the quick brief again. So we can see all these interfaces have been configured. 
and on here we can see that it's requesting the configuration files from the web server so the app at the bottom is just a web page to display the config and being able to browse the config on a web browser and at the top it's just a web server serving the files and on the putty session we can see that all the interfaces and the configuration is being applied so once this is all finished hopefully we will have basic ip addressing and we will have this topology with dmvpn configured between r5 r1 r2 r3 and r4 okay so it's done r7 r8 is doing it so let's have a look at R7 is done. R8 is done. Ethernet 01 has just come up. And then R9 and R10 once that's done. So let's see on R5 if I do show DMVPN. Okay, so we can see that. DMVPN has come up between 1, 2, 3, and 4, which is what we have on our topology. So this is like zero touch config, where we initially we bootstrapped the routers with Telnet, with simple basic config, and then we used the web browser and web server to deploy the config on all the routers. So if we look at R10, this should be configured as well. Yeah. So we have all the routers configured and we can start labbing and configuring protocols and doing Okay, so if I quickly show you the files so my bootstrap config let me just bring it up here so i'll quickly explain what the syntax and code looks like so it's pretty simple so i have a function which is doing api call to evng so i just picked up the headers from uh, the browser tools so if you open developer tools you can um, just copy the headers from there, whatever request Eve is doing. And then uh, it's a simple config where it's doing the request to the API to get a particular lab, um, which I gave it IME hyphen lab. If you remember in the bootstrap config, and then all I'm doing is using Telnet to configure the host name and then another function where I'm getting the IP address and then I'll conf I'm configuring it as a static IP address and at the bottom here is I'm just using the dictionary which my API Eve API function returned so here it is so I'm getting this device dict from my that function and then just using the devices from there to connect to them and then write a file out for IP text dot text and once that file is created it's not in here but that file have the root the um, host name and the SSH IP address. And then what the HTTP server, which is running here, 
It's just a simple small script where it's running a HTTP server on port 80. And then the deploy config, I'm using NetMiko. And then it uses the file ip.txt to read all the devices. And then it's, this is my URL for my config where I'm picking up the configs from here. And then it's just sending the configs. So on the device, it's sending file prompt quiet command. And then it's copying the config. So this is the command. So copy and then give it a HTTP URL dot txt to running. Okay. Um, I'll probably share this code on GitHub or something and then put the link in the description.